Well, it's, I think it's such an incredible vision and I haven't seen your orchestra play in person. I would love to someday, but even watching them and seeing what you have created is is truly inspiring to to see. Seeing you in front of the orchestra, I you have such a poise and such a skill set for controlling the room and having these mu- musicians work together. I, I can't imagine you can, when you're becoming a conductor, can practice that unless you're actually standing in front of an orchestra. So how, how did you actually learn the skills required to do that? Well, that's such a great point that you're making, Sarah. You know, when violinists practice their instrument, they have a violin and have a flute and, and so on. For a conductor, like you said, the orchestra, that group of 80 or 100 people is our instrument because the little stick that we hold, which is called the baton, it actually doesn't make any sound. And so it's not really a musical instrument. It's just a way for us to focus our energy and our um, violent musical directions to the orchestra so they can be us. It's also a little bit of a symbol of our authority as a conductor. And so one of the things that we learn to do as young conductors is to learn how to communicate with our body. That includes our eyes and our faces, our arm gestures, the way that we stand up. And it kind of, because of course we can't talk to the orchestra all the time. We don't want to interfere with the music making, speaking over the time. And so we have to really learn how to communicate non-verbally with the orchestra. And everything about how we introduce ourselves to the musician, even non-verbally, communicates to them our leadership. But it's something that's learned over time. Young people may be very brash and have a lot of ideas and a lot of energy, but it doesn't always mean that they're the most authoritative person in the room. You have to think orchestras as a group of all these people have a collective understanding and a collective memory that's much greater than the years that one individual conductor has been alive. You know, a lot of these great orchestras have been around for hundreds of years. They've done Beethoven thousands of times. And to think that, you know, you as a young conductor are going to come in and teach them something. You know, it's an opportunity for you to to both listen to the orchestra and learn as well as offer them. Yeah, totally. Do you find that the skills that you have gotten there translate to other areas of your life? Is it... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, right, I'm sure you know, like being an astronaut is just being an astronaut, like all the things that you use um, to excel at what you do. These are all things that you can practice in everyday life. I think one of the most important things that I've learned as a conductor and that I teach other young conductors when I'm working with kids in orchestras is that um, the lesson of what you put out into the universe is what you get back. And so if you give respect and preparation and consideration to the orchestra, you're going to get back some wonderful music making. And I think that holds true just when you're walking down on the street and when you're at a grocery store or when you need help from someone, what you put out into the universe, if you put out respect and kindness and strength and gratitude, I think you'll get those things back. I love that. And it's, you're receiving what 80 people in front of you are giving. You're constantly navigating this living, breathing group of people, people creating music. That's, that's so cool. 